We're gonna take these intake valves from this to this at home DIY style for under 250 bucks. Let's go. Carbon cleaning on BMW intake valves. How do you do it? First step is getting the intake manifold removed, which this car already had it off. For supplies, you need the media blaster, a media blaster wand, walnut shell, 1840 grit, the intake adapter for your vacuum, and a good vacuum. Before we start, I need to clean out this shop vac. I washed this out because you want a really clean vacuum. This is gonna be capturing all of our spent walnut shell during the intake valve cleaning process. And a lot of times you have to strain this out and reuse this media. So you don't want any rocks or glass or anything like this to get into the walnut shell that can potentially get into your cylinder. Now let's get this media blaster set up. I bought all this off FCP Euro except for the walnut shell. I bought that on Amazon. FCP Euro sells a kit for this exact job for about 250 bucks but their walnut shell was only a five pound bag and I wanted at least double that, so I bought a 16 pound bag off of Amazon. All right, so you take the cap off and we're gonna fill the bottle up here, I believe. We have our blow off valve right here. This is gonna be our intake pressure to the hopper. I believe this is gonna pressurize the tank. And then this valve here is going to send pressure down to our tip. And then this fitting down here is going to be our media adjustment valve so however far we open this that's going to push how much media into the wand and then this valve is going to open our wand so we got a lot of valves four total but we don't have any air leaks the thing seems to be set up right so we'll see what happens i'm going to go run a little test batch outside and see how it works we'll hit this little dark area here God damn, walnuts flying everywhere. You can see it cleaned it up really nice. Here's all the spent shell, so we are operational. So I've just capped off everything that has oil and fuel flowing through it. Oil filter housing's covered up. Same with the port for the high pressure fuel pump and all of the direct injectors. You don't wanna get any walnut in there. Now I've done this repair probably 10 or 15 times. I've done it on BMW N54s. I've also done it on Mini Coopers. I think it was the N18 engine that had a lot of carbon buildup. So I used to do this quite often in the shop, but I have not done this DIY method with the media blaster that I bought. So it's gonna be a new learning experience. Now to check to see if it's closed, I use a can of brake cleaner and a straw. And I just basically fill up the intake ports with brake cleaner. And then I look for bubbles. If there's no bubbles, then I know it's nice and tight. Or if there's just super little minimal bubbles, then it's usually okay. This one's bubbling a little bit. You can see we got a little bit of bubbling going on in there. Now, if it is bubbling like that, the way I get the brake cleaner back out is with a rag and the air gun. But you really, really want to wear safety glasses. I've scratched my cornea doing this before. It blew out past the rag and I didn't have safety glasses on and I took a piece of carbon directly into the eyeball. Just like that. Got to be careful. Sprayed it all out and now it just soaked up into the rag. So now I got a half inch ratchet and a 22 millimeter socket. I'm going to put that onto the crank and we'll just start with cylinder number one. Wow, you can hear pressure leaking out of that cylinder number two intake valve because or that intake valve is so plugged up with carbon, it's preventing it from sealing. Intake's closed on cylinder number one. See, it's filled up with brake cleaner and we got no bubbles. Now, how I've always done this is I take some pick tools. I'm not gonna use sharp picks. I'm gonna use these flat dull picks. Is I go in there and I try to scrape that carbon off, just the big chunks. That way, when I do media blast, I only have to worry about the small stuff. Now, I'm gonna go pretty gentle, but I'm just gonna kind of work that tool around in there. Just a little light cleaning and then also filling with brake cleaner confirms that you have a good seal and that you're not leaking brake cleaner down into the cylinder or you're not filling up the cylinder with walnut shell. I had a coworker do this and the valve was cracked and he media blasted it. Little did he know he filled the cylinder with walnut, went to turn the car over, cracked the piston. All right, now we'll spray our brake cleaner out. Can cleaner already. All right, so we got our vacuum port plugged in. That is going to the shop vac. We're gonna fire that on. We have our air connected. Open this up, the line. We have our mixture control set. All I'll have to do is just turn that valve and we'll start shooting media. Classic. I had the shop vac connected to the wrong end. And it's right here where my microphone stops working. 
By the way, did you know that 80% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel? So if you enjoy this video and you want to help me afford some new microphones, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Now don't mind the walnut shell everywhere. When I had that shot back reversed, it made quite a bit of a mess, but check out cylinder number one. Now I am thoroughly impressed with how well this media blaster works. Here I'm just spraying down the outside of the port with some brake cleaner, hitting it with a wire brush just, just to get some of the big stuff off and kind of give it a nice polish all the way around. Another thing I like to do when cleaning up those walls is I'll bring this wand all the way back almost to where the tip is about to back out of the vacuum attachment. And then I do big circles in there just to really spray the outside walls, spray it out with some compressed air and look at that finished result. That cylinder is mint. And now we just simply rinse and repeat for the other five cylinders. Now if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen this car before, a viewer of mine gave me this BMW 335i for free. A couple months ago I bought and fully restored a BMW and then I gave it away to a random viewer. He saw me do that and wanted to give me this car out of the kindness of his heart. So he gave it to me with the intake manifold removed with a bunch of new parts for the car. And this is the very first step to getting this thing back on the road and in good driving shape. Here's just a little status update on the first four cylinders after cleaning. Now this media blaster has been great. I really like the large size hopper. I haven't had to clean the media and refill it at all during this entire process. One interesting thing to note though is the last two cylinders on this car are the cleanest. Now they're not perfect, but there was near, not nearly as much carbon on those last two as there was on the front four. Another thing I'd recommend is don't wait to do cylinder number six last. It's the hardest to get to. The vacuum attachment doesn't like to fit in there that well, and you don't want to do the last and most frustrating one at the very end. I did it second to last. That way I could finish out with cylinder number five, make my life a little bit easier. There you have it. All six cylinders cleaned up and minty fresh. Now this happens about every 60 to 100 K. So if you do have a BMW N54, I'd recommend giving it a try yourself. So now I think I'm going to slap the oil filter housing back on while I still got a little bit of motivation and we'll call it a day. Now before I move on from the intake valves, a couple key features to remember. I like to get that nozzle down to the back of the valve. Again, you're going to have to angle it to the left for that valve, angle it to the right for that one. And then once I get it down and I hit the valve, I back it up a little bit and I do little circles. Then I bring it back and I do some more little circles. Now here's what all the spent walnut shell in the shop back looks like. With this 18 pound bag of media and this large size hopper, I did not have to refill this media blaster once. If you do have to refill it, I get a small sieve or colander like this, and then I shake it all out, and I pull all the big hard carbon chunks out because you don't want those clogging your media blaster. The holes on my sieve are a little small, so I'm just gonna package this all up and clean it the next time I have to use it. Now I get to put this thing back together. A little bit of red scotch bright to clean up the mating surface for the filter housing. And again, big shout out to Dandy Waves, Mr. Anthony from El Centro for hooking me up with this car and all of these parts that he gave me with it. I mean, I got turbos, oil filter housings, oil cooler gasket, oil filter housing gasket, oil cooler o-rings, throttle body gasket. He's got everything in here, making my life so easy. Now I'm firing up my new bench grinder. My dad gave this thing to me. It's a 1910s Hobart coffee grinder. Someone lopped the hoppers off on the side, turned it into a bench grinder. It is such a beautiful, badass piece of equipment. I'm just putting a quick buff on all this hardware, cleaning up the heads of the bolts, cleaning out all the threads. It makes a world of a difference, especially for a heavily oil-saturated piece like the oil filter housing and the oil cooler. Here I'm putting a quick spit shine on the oil filter housing and catching my glove while I'm doing it. Now it's really nice to have a commercial parts washer, but you're probably a DIYer like me, so you got to get after it with a wire brush, a rag, can of brake cleaner, and a screwdriver. But it is really important to spend some extra time here scrubbing the outside and scrubbing the gasket surface, making sure that all that old crud in the gasket sealing area is cleaned out. You don't want any of that impeding the seal. And these oil filter housings are so incredibly common to leak that it really helps to do all the steps and be as thorough as possible to really make sure that gasket gets a good seal. Now the filter housing's going back on. I am torquing this to spec, 22 newton meters. Now I'll be the first to admit, I don't always torque everything, but these oil filter housings are very important to torque to spec. We used to not always torque them to spec and just torque them to hand back at the shop and just use Victor Ryan's gaskets, whatever was cheap, but we had a lot of comebacks. And after we had all those comebacks, every single person had to torque them all by hand to spec. And it's really important. These things fail every 60K already. So you want to do everything you can to help prolong that and keep these things from failing. 
Now I'm putting the plugs back into the bottom of the oil cooler. Now these plugs don't have to come out if you're doing an oil filter housing reseal. Yet they were removed, so I got my handy dandy sealing washer kit. I'm going to link one of these in the descriptions. It is so nice to have on hand. I never have to leave the shop to go get sealing washers because I keep this thing on hand. And it's usually got every size I need. As long as you got the same inside diameter, you're good to go. The outside diameter can vary a little bit, but it is really nice to have these aluminum sealing washer sets. So like I said, I don't torque everything to spec, and we're not going to torque these to spec. I'm just throwing a good wrench on them, and uh, until I feel that sealing washer really start to slip and crush, then I know we're good. We're going to hit the exterior with this little wire brush. I like these brushes because they have this little uh, nose brush on them, so I can kind of get into the tight cracks. I'll go ahead and link these in the description down below in case they're helpful for you. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you see this gasket? Just curious. Oil cooler gasket is back on and oil cooler's going back on. Now we are torquing these to spec. 16 newton meters on all three of these bolts. I think they are E12s. And then 22 newton meters on the oil filter housing. Those are E10s. Shout out to Anthony for hooking me up with all these parts plus this car. I mean, he's got the oil cooler O rings in the bag ready to go. I remember what color they are. They're always silver. You just take the old O ring, match it up. Stick them on your finger, make sure they got the same inside diameter and outside diameter. So those are good. We'll uh, get these oil cooler lines put back on now. And if I remember correctly, it should be this long 13 with this washer. Good and tight on that one. Well gang, that's gonna wrap this one up. I'm still gonna pull the spark plugs and send a boroscope down in the combustion chamber, make sure I don't have any walnut shell in there before I fire it up. But to be honest with you, the 10, 15 times I've done this before, I've never had any large amounts of walnut shell get down there and cause any issues like my old coworker had. It's normal for it to get a little bit of walnut shell down there. You can actually smell it when you fire the car up for the first time after the repair. It smells like roasted chestnuts and it smells pretty good. Um, but like I said, I've done this 10, 15 times at least and I've never had an issue with too much walnut shell bypassing that intake valve and getting into the combustion chamber. It's normal for just a little bit, a couple granules, you know, but it's walnut shell. It's going to burn off and it's going to get pushed out of the exhaust. We didn't get enough Sagey Girl in this video, but here she is. She's just napping and chilling. I'm doing some editing. Big shout out to all my viewers, subscribers, members, and patrons. I really appreciate all your guys' support. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, folks, I will see you on my next day off. Cheers, everybody.